We'll start by giving this old fence a quick sanding and then brush the dust off and we'll be ready for stenciling. And of course, we'll be using cutting edge stencils today. We have our Sunshine Dahlia. We have Chrysanthemum Grande. We've got Favorite Flower. And we've got Anemone Grande, as well as this innovative leaf and stem kit. We're gonna start with the darker color first, Renovation Gray. I've got that ready to go. I've got a dense foam roller and a few paper towels to offload the roller so there won't be too much paint. And I've placed my first stencil, secured it with just a few pieces of blue tape, the Anemone Grande, and we'll start with that. Okay, when you're stenciling, try to use a nice, even pressure. I mean, look how the roller pushes the stencil down. And now you can remove the stencil. And it looks great already. Randomly place your next stencil and just continue. So now I'm gonna use this stem stencil and it's got this curved section. So if I want the flower to lean this way, I'll use it this way. If I want the flower to lean the other way, I use it this way. So it's really easy to get multiple directions with one stencil. Okay, I've got the stem stencil placed and now I'm just gonna use my roller, but I'm just gonna use the, the nose of it, just the end of it. And I'm just gonna come down and just use it almost like a paintbrush. It's that simple. Mm, great. So now we're gonna use the leaf stencil and add some leaves to the stems. When you're using the leaf stencil, if you're afraid that you're gonna overroll and get into this other leaf area, just put a piece of tape on it, cover it up like so. This way you can roll the leaf that you want. And if you over, do it like that and go over this area. It doesn't even matter because you covered it up. Perfect. You've got a lot of control with these rollers. You can angle them, use just the tip. Super easy. All right, I finished with the renovation gray and now I'm gonna move on to white birch. That's gonna give us the light color on top I pre-place my stencils to knock it right out. What do you think of this project? It turned out great and it's an easy one for first time stencilers. Thanks for tuning in to Home Talk and we'll see you next project. First thing we need to do with this project is to mask off either your crown molding or your ceiling. We're gonna have the stencil drop from the ceiling down on the wall, so grab some low-tack blue painter's tape and mask it off. Okay, for this project, we're gonna be using this beautiful stencil from Cutting Edge Stencils. This is a Weeping Cherry stencil. It's absolutely beautiful. We're gonna secure that with a little bit of spray adhesive, repositionable spray adhesive. We'll spray this on the back, do it outside so you don't smell or breathe these fumes. And we're gonna be using these paints right here. Benjamin Moore Navajo White Ben is our base coat. We're gonna use a little raw umber from Folk Art, a little light pink from folk art and bright magenta let's get started okay we've got our spray adhesive on the back of the stencil and a few pieces of tape to help secure it now it's time to position the stencil so we're going to go up to the crown molding here and we're going to go a little bit above with the vines it's going to be a little bit above the crown molding here like so and then we'll lay that flat Spray adhesive's doing its job perfectly, and we're ready to stencil. Okay, we've got our paints laid out. We're using these little trays here. They're really handy. Uh, also, we're gonna be using inch and a half stencil brushes from Cutting Edge Stencils. These are beautiful professional brushes for the cherry blossoms. And then for the branches on the tree, we're gonna be using this three quarter inch brush and the raw umber. Okay, we have to load our brush here. The way we do that is we just dip the tip into the paint, just a little bit like that, and then we swirl it like so. It's called palleting the brush, which evenly distributes the paint into the tips. Then I'll come over here and just knock a little bit off, 
and we've got the perfect loaded stencil brush. Okay, I got my loaded uh, stencil brush with a little bit of raw umber on it. I'm going to start with the branches. Now, I'm going to bend the stencil a little bit into the crown molding like this so I can get right in there. So just use your fingers, press it in, and then you can kind of pounce with a vertical motion and get it close to the edge of the ceiling or the crown molding. And then just lightly come down and introduce this raw umber color to where the branches would be. Very simple, doesn't have to be perfect. Try not to get too much on the blossom area. Okay, we do this stencil in layers. What we want to do to achieve this beautiful organic look is to put a light color in the background first. We have these two different colors here that we'll be using for the blossoms, but we're going to use the light pink color as kind of like a faded shadow in the background. And then we're going to do another stencil on top using the dark magenta color. I'm going to use a pouncing and swirling motion to do the blossoms. So I'm going to hold the stencil down pounce straight up and down gives me a great effect also you can do a circular motion like this works great either one of those techniques is a fine way to stencil these blossoms you can have variation in opacity some areas can be a little lighter some areas can be a little darker that's only going to make it look that much better all right, we finished this stencil plate up here. We're going to continue in these colors around the entire room, and then we'll come back and do the darker magenta on top. All right, let's see what it looks like. Okay, I finished the first process, done the light pink. This is my background or shadow area. Now I'm going to do the foreground in this bright magenta color. So we're going to place our stencil, but don't place it in the exact same place as you did the first one. You want it to be organic and you want it to move slightly left or right. So let's do that now. I'm going to place this. I'm going to have it slightly off from my previous or background stencil. And then we're going to stencil this in magenta. Okay, I want to extend this branch here, so I'm going to use this section of the stencil only just to extend this branch. So I'll put this like so, and then we'll stencil only this area here. Okay, when extending or using only a portion of the stencil here, there's areas that I don't want to stencil, like these blossoms here, because I'm just doing this section. So you can take a piece of plastic or a piece of cardboard and just hold it over the area that you don't want to stencil, like that, and then stencil the area you want to paint. And then you can pull your shield down and you get this beautiful extension. Okay, we're going to want to fill in this area here at the crown molding. So I'm going to take the stencil and I'm going to place it in just that area where I want to fill it in. And then I'm just going to stencil this in. Okay, what we want to do is we want to take some of these branches and we want to extend them up underneath the crown molding so the illusion continues. So I just took a little artist brush and I took some of my branch color, slightly diluted it with a little water so it flows nice and easy, and I'm just going to extend these just like this. Just come in, add the little bit of the branch so it looks like it continues right up underneath. It's time to unmask. Wasn't that an easy project? So simple, great for beginners. All it takes is a great stencil, a little bit of know-how, and you can produce an accent wall just like this. Thanks for tuning in to Home Talk, and we'll see you next time.